so many times that, uh, you know, God treated Abraham and God treated uh, Noah and God treated Moses different than He treated treats us. But not so. If you notice, as Toby read there in verse 1 of chapter 15, I want you to go back and look. Uh, we're looking. Uh, we'll say, I've heard people say, Toby, if God would speak to me like He spoke to them, uh, I, you know, it would increase my faith. God does speak to us like He does them. Look at verse 1 of chapter 15. It said, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham. How? In a vision. Yes, sir. He came in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. He spoke to him in a vision just like He does us. Why God don't speak to us? God doesn't speak to us, but we've got our minds so clouded with things of this world and, 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 and our desires and our pleasure that God can't reach us. And I'm glad for it. I, I, I'm glad He's understanding, Toby. And I'm glad that He loves me when I'm unlovable. And I'm glad that He makes a way. I, he, he shows me stuff over and over. And I've got something that this might surprise the socks off of some of you this morning. And I, I want to share it with you. Uh, we think that Zach sings that song that, that uh, I just wanted you to know. Talks about Abraham taking Isaac and testing him. So many times right after when Zach, uh, one of the most scared times in Zach's life, and he's talked about it uh, when he was just a little old lad. I was preaching about Abraham and Isaac. I used Zach as, as Isaac. I brought him up, laid him down. Zach was scared to death. He thought old dad... I was in the back of the church acting up. You didn't know that. <laughs> but anyway, he come up and, and brought him. And I, I was uh, using an example with Zach how that Isaac was. Told me God don't ask anything of us that that he or his sons not went through. And I'll tell you what. He's already been there. And he's already been done. He's already done that. In order for him to make the way, he had to be in the way. In order for him to make the way, he had to be the way. And I'm glad for him. I'm glad that he's alive and well. And I'm glad, Toby, that he hears our earnest prayer. I was thinking this morning as you was talking about us praying and us talking to God. There was a little boy uh, was down on his knees saying his bedtime prayer about a week before uh, his uh, uh, birthday. And, and, and I thought of how so many times we're so conscientious of what somebody else would hear in our prayer. And if we're not careful, we'll use words that like it'll sound good in men's ears instead of getting a hold of God. But this little boy was down beside his bed and his mommy was waiting on him to pray and she was going to tuck him in for the night. And like I said, it was a week before his birthday, Zach. And he was a hollering at the top of his voice. Lord, I, I want a BB gun and I want this and I want that. And finally his mommy said, Honey, said, you don't have to holler so loud when you pray. God's not deaf. He said, yeah, but Mama's plumb upstairs and she's hard to hear enough. He wasn't worried about God. Yes, sir. He was worried about Mama hearing his prayer. Boy, I tell you what, God hears our prayer from oh. our heart. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm glad for the Lord. Amen. God speaks to us if we'll listen. Sure. Now I want you to go over to chapter 17 of Genesis. And uh, I want to share something with you. We think, listen, we think that things is hard. And we look at things and say, boy, it must be tough. And I've been studying this and I've been thinking about it, Toby, for the last couple weeks. And I thought, boy, God was planting a way and He was making a way. And I mentioned this to Zach Wednesday night after church. And uh, I, I said, uh, God was trying to explain to the people back then and He was showing the people... If we'll take the Old Testament and we, there was a man one time, he was, he was so upset. Listen, and I'll share this with you in just a minute, but, but anyway, we think that God just looked on things lightly. If we'll pay attention to the Scripture, Toby, God worked everything in the Old Testament. What was the test, Old Testament times? 
It was a preparation for the New Testament times. In the Old Testament, listen, it was a setup, it was a foundation for us to have salvation through Jesus Christ. And I'm glad for it. Boy, I'll tell you what, he went to extremes and he went to great measures to satisfy our sin sick soul. Now, are you in 17 of Genesis? Yeah. I want to read something to you. This is a thought. You say, you might be the craziest preacher I ever thought of. Boy, I'll tell you what, God just opened up something to me. We'll preach, we'll preach, and we'll teach it. And I thought, and I preached for so long, and I pictured old Isaac being a little old boy, about three, four, five years old. And you know what? Zach's 26 years old. He's taller than I am now. He's his own man. He told me it was hard. Now, I don't know if you've experienced this. Probably not. But there's going to come a day in, in Braden's life. Listen, now you can snap your finger and you say, Braden, I mean for you to do it this way. And uh, Braden it looks up to you, Toby, and you're in charge whether you like it or not. And I know that you take honor in being a father to your daughter and son. But now you snap your finger and you tell Braden, Braden, I said for you to do it this way. But there's going to come a time in Braden's life that time tarries and the Lord tarries His coming. Toby, you ain't going to be able to snap your finger. If you want to change Braden's mind, you're going to have to sit down and talk to him like a man because he'll be a man. And you remember those days. You remember back when uh, you've done everything that Bobby said to do, don't you? You remember that old Bobby and say, Toby, I want you to do it this way. I want you to do it that way. And you had to do it. But there came a time when you became a man that you made your own decisions. That was hard for me when Zach made that change from being my old boy to a man. Yes, sir, Red. I don't go down to Zach's house now and say, Zach, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. If I do have a thought on my mind, I might say, son, don't you think you ought to do this? Or don't you think you ought to do that? Listen to me. Boy, I tell you what, God can make a difference. I was thinking yesterday, I went down to a, a, a function that my buddy Bean and I've been telling you about that just got saved. And I looked and those folks, you know, they was proud to have him just being a Christian two weeks old. They were so proud to have him there. And I thought, church, if you only knew the thing that I knew, how that, that filthy mouth has been transformed, oh, how that, that hatred is yeah. no longer there. Yeah. If you knew what God had blessed your church with, yeah. he's a shining light as yeah. Tony was talking, not oh, here but out in the world. Oh, yeah. And he's a great asset to that yeah. church. And that's what we can be. What in the world happened to my glasses? Anyway, they'll be around here somewhere. I've got to have them. You got them? How in the world did you end up with them? But anyways, uh, uh, I, I preached for so long, and I want you to get this. I preached for so long, and I had the mindset, and the Bible calls Abraham, when Abraham told God told Abraham to take Isaac, his only son, the Bible said as they went on their way, he said, take the lad. And in another place, after they got on the mountain, the God called him a lad. But listen to me. How many would agree with me? You read in the Bible, boy, I feel like preaching. You thought, we might get out early. You might, you might not. Yes, sir. How old was Abraham when God spoke to him, told me and fulfilled another promise? He said, I'm going to give you a son in your old age. He was 99, wasn't he? How many remembers how old his wife was? She was 90 years old. Would you agree? Well, that's just about my goodness gracious. You talking about turning the town upside down? Can you imagine if that take place in Rumble? Facebook would be set on fire. Yes, sir. I wonder how they've been taking medicine. They've been taking fertility pills and all of that. But God said, Abraham, as Toby taught, I'll make you a promise. And when I make a promise, I'll keep my promise. Yes, he'll keep We forget, church, that he's coming back. Yes. He's coming back, Toby. Oh. He promised that he's coming yes. back. Yes. Well, preacher, get where you're going. 
The Bible said in verse 17 of chapter 17, Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? He had already had a birthday. And shall Sarah, that is ninety years old, bear? That's pretty old, ain't it? Yeah. Now, let's turn over a couple of chapters. Let's take your time. You can read this later. Oh, they went through Sodom and Gomorrah. Then they got over in chapter 22. And the Bible said in verse 1, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, he said, Abraham, and he said, Behold what? Here I am. Now listen to me. Yes, sir. Well, we want to we wanna do this or that, and we want to take time. We want to weigh it out. God said, Abraham, Abraham said, here am I. Yes, sir, I'm ready. That's why people have victory with God. Well, I don't know if it's God or not. I'll send out a place. And if God, if it's really you, do this or do that. Boy, if Richard Harold had a dollar for every time, he said, that Richard said, God, if it's really you, show me this or show me that. I wore him out with that, Toby. Man, I'll tell you what, it's time that we have faith in God. If God promised you do it, won't he, Toby? Amen. Remember this little lad. I picture him three. I picture him three, four, five years old. I've got some of you thinking now, and it would be easy. Yeah, oh. it was easy back then. I could do about anything I wanted to with Zach if he didn't. He didn't listen to me. Uh, maybe me and him had plans. Uh, I'd go even get him by the arm, jerk him out of bed, and son, it's time to get up. I don't treat him like that now. Why? He's big as I am, and he's his own man. Yeah. I'll call him up and I'll say, hey, bud, are you out of bed? It's a different tone of voice than it used to be. Boy, I said for you to get out of bed. If I'm calling now and say, boy, it's time for you to get up. He'd say, dad, mind your business. And he'd be right and say it. I can see him now. I can see him now as I've preached so many times. If he was that little lad, but I want to show you something that will stir you and move you. On, right. I preached before on Noah, Shem, Ham, and J. Path. Those men were grown men. Why? Because they was mar married. And they had lives of their own. Sure, but man. when God give, give uh, Noah a vision to build an ark on top of a mountain... Boy, I tell you what, that was stepping out, Toby, when it never rained sure. and they had never seen a flood before. And you know what? He was man enough. Listen, he was man enough and lived a life before Sham Ham and J. Path. That Daddy said it'll happen. If Daddy said that God told him it'll happen, sure. it'll happen. We're going to help Dad. Sure, now listen, I preached before that old Abraham took Isaac and he laid him upon the altar and he bound him up. Yep. I can picture me doing that. Why? Because he was just a little old boy. Listen to me. Just a little old boy there. And listen, he was under daddy's control. What did I read in chapter 17, verse 17? Abraham laughed. He said, I'm a hundred years old. And Sarah's 90 years old. I want to show you something else. The Bible said here in 22, that, and he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Yes, sir. And the Bible said that he got a couple servants, uh, saddled some asses, uh, took all the provisions and took off, uh, except for one thing, the sacrifice uh, for the offering upon the altar. Now, uh, everybody knows the story, and everybody took place. Uh, chapter 17, verse 17, uh, Abraham said, I'm a hundred years old. My wife's ten years younger than I am. Listen to me. That's a long time. It is. But I want to show you. And I know you're curious. Hang on. I'm going to take you there. And the angel Lord called unto him out of heaven in verse 11. And said, Abraham, 
Abraham and he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad. This is the second time in this chapter that he calls him a lad. Still picturing him as a little boy. And I'm supposing, Toby, but I know that God's able to do it. Amen. How old was Jesus when He was crucified? 33 years old. Yeah. That was the end of His life. Listen to me. Why He was a man to make His own decisions. When He prayed in the garden, listen, He said, Father, not my will, but, uh, but, not my will, but Thine will be done. Yes, sir. He, he was a man at that age. He had come to a man's age and he walked like a man and he made his own decisions but he was un in subjection unto God Almighty. Oh, yeah. That's the way it was. Yes, you're right. Get us to where you're going. This is a blessing. And the Bible said, a lot of times, Toby, a lot of times we don't see or we don't have the victory with God and we don't have, we don't see the victory with God because sometimes we're so far away from God. I want to show you something interesting that touched my mind. People say I done read the Bible 20 times and I know everything in it. I don't know how many times I've read the Bible, but I'm still getting brand new stuff out of it. This kind of turned me upside down when I got to looking at it. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by, the th by his thorns. Abraham went and, went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this, this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as Toby taught this morning. As the sand, I hope I'm not getting on these guys' uh, the future lessons in this quarterly, which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall, pros shall possess the gate of the enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast what? Obeyed my voice. Now I'm going to share with you what sparked my interest and stirred my interest to. Look in verse 1 of chapter 23. I just got through telling you that Abraham was 100 years old. Yeah. Sarah was 90. The Bible said Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. A lot of time flew by too. Sarah, 37 years and went by. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Now the way I read this and the way I understand that, yeah. that's still my little boy over there. Yeah. That's still my little girl. Yeah. If he was 60 years old, he's still, and I'm still living, he's still... Richard, the little boy. Yes. Oh, yes. And I look at him like that, and God knows that I look at him. Now, Zach, the way I understand this reading here, God announced Sarah's age right after the sacrifice had been taking place. Yes. You get what I'm saying, Ronnie? Oh, yeah. Sarah was already 127 years old. And at 37 years, 36, 37 years had done past, she not only was 30 some years older, but Isaac was 30 some years older. Yes. Come here, Zach. You've done pretty good that time. Yes. I should have said, son, if you don't mind, stand up. <laughs> now it's a whole lot different. Come down here. It's a whole lot different taking this a guy this size, 26 years old. Yeah. And dealing with him, it's a lot of difference in dealing with a man uh, uh, this age and this size than it was a man a three, lad. four, or five years old to Yeah, yeah, you're right. A different story is taking Oh, place. yes. 
Hold on Abraham, here. Isaac asked Abraham, Jack, if you remember going up the mountain. He said, Dad, yeah. where's the sacrifice? We've got the wood and the fire. Yeah. He said, but where's the sacrifice? Yeah. And, and, and they were men now, Zach. Abraham had to look at him and say, Now, son, we've been through all this before. God will provide. And that's the last word the Bible records that Isaac spoke to Abraham. And they got up there and I believe they had to have a man-to-man -man talk. Oh, yeah. And I believe, listen, I believe old Abraham had to lay the foundation. Come on, Richard. He said, son, you're 30-some years old now and you're a man. You're a man. And I know that you've got plans in your life. But son, God made me a promise way back then. He promised that He would not only multiply my seed, but He'll multiply your seed. Yes. But son, you're going to have to trust me. Listen, I've got this altar oh, prepared. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how it's going to work. Oh, yeah. And I know this is not how you planned for yeah. your life. But son, you're going to have to trust the old man one more time. Oh. I've got this altar prepared. Now I've got the wood laid in order. Oh. And listen to yeah. You're going to have to lay down here. Oh. And listen to yeah. I'm going to have to offer you as a sacrifice yeah. oh. to God Almighty. Yeah. Boy, I believe Lee, that old Isaac went oh. over and said, Dad, yeah. I'll shake hands on this. I believe you're a man of your word. And I believe that you're not mistaken yeah. in whom you're talking. Yeah. Zach, I believe old way Isaac laid down there like a man. Yes, he did. He sure did and said, Dad, have that on me. Yes. But maybe he did like Jesus did in the garden. Sure, maybe he yeah. took him and said, Lord, is there some other way, is there some other way yeah. that we might be able to do oh, this? Yes. Is there some other way? Yeah. Jesus prayed nevertheless. Oh, but he said, Lord, if thou be willing, let this cup pass from me. Yeah. Listen, Isaac might have said, Dad, I know we've got a, plot, a lot of plot that God has blessed oh, us with. Yeah. Can't we go back to the house? Yeah. He might have said, Dad, listen, I've got just one old calf or just one old lamb that I took for a baby. Dad, I, I watched over it and I've taken care of it. He said, that's my prized possession. Dad, I'll give it to you. Abraham looked at Isaac. He said, son, I appreciate it. But God said, listen, you know how much I love you, Isaac? You know how much I appreciate you. You know our relationship we got. I know one thing. God will bless us and we'll be over it. Yes. Amen. Good preaching. God look down. Church, do we realize how much God loves us? Yeah. Have you put yourself in that spot? Jesus being 30 some years old. And he looked down and seen Lee East End, Richard Harold. Come on, Richard. Listen, people all over this building this morning. He looked down through the ages of time. You think about it. Yeah. Saw you lost and undone without a savior. And he said, Oh my. And he began to deal with the enemy. And the enemy wouldn't take nothing. No sirree. The enemy could have had all the things of this earth. But he desired the past possession out of God's almighty heart. And that past possession was his only son, Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Church, do we realize just what kind of price was paid for our sins? Boy, I tell you what, it was the ultimate price. Oh, yeah. Amen. God told Abraham to take Isaac up the mountain, sing it, and offer him a sacrifice to me. I know tears rolled down, breath was hard to come by. As Abraham was knelt there on his knees, but hand in hand they headed up the mountain. Like shattered glass inside his heart was breaking For he'd never known the 
pain like this before. Much too soon they reached the spot where they were going. He laid Isaac down on his deathbed. But a God of mercy stopped him. That was a promise, he Toby. Said, I just wanted you to know exactly how it feels to watch a son you love walk up a lonely hill. To feel the pain inside as your heart breaks in your chest. To lose the very thing. They walk him up that hill. I just wanted you to know exactly how I feel when they walk him up that hill. I just wanted you to know. I've told you about how happy I was August 11th, of 1987. Debbie, if you'd have asked me, you think you'd love that boy any more than you love him now? I'd have said, I, I'm trying to get your attention, church. Back when he was just minutes old, I thought I could never love him any more than I loved him then. Church, after all these years, y'all know what I'm talking about. All of you that's got children. I didn't think in 87 that I could love him anymore. But after all these years, all that we've been through, the bond that we developed, and the first message after Zach was born, I couldn't wait to preach for God so loved the world. But I'm here to tell you, church, it would be much harder for me to give him up today than it would have been Johnny back in 87. Boy. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Yes. Sure, it would have been hard oh, for Abraham to offer Isaac if he's three or four years old. But him being a man now, Bobby, you know what I'm talking about with your boys. Yeah. That mom. Yeah, I called Zach this week and we'll share with one of me and his secrets. Love grows. I said, son, man, you're my best friend. You're my best friend here on earth. And he is. Jenny, you are too. I don't want to get in trouble. I know it would have been hard for Isaac to give you. Thank you for giving me time this morning, Toby. I appreciate that. I, I enjoyed your mess. Your lesson. You, you get what I'm saying, Toby? You think you couldn't love Braden or care any more than you do? But you wait 10 more years. There's going to be memories that you make, and Bob, that'll draw you close. Sure. Hard times, Toby. Yes. You and the kids will lay and they're down beside their bedside. I know you've already prayed, but your mommy will have to pray a few things. It'll make that Bob closer. You're right. And if they go out into the world, and I know some of you's got unsaved children, that don't stop the love. That makes the bond closer. Right. And because they're not unsaved, don't mean that God don't love them and you don't love them. On, but we've got to keep loving them as God loves them, Toby, to bring them in. You're right. But it would have been hard for I'm Abraham good. to give Isaac on there. Man, after all these memories were made. After all these bombs, come on, come on, Richard. Yes. It was tougher. But God was showing the world and setting a foundation. He said, I want you all to know, I want you to get what I'm going to do. Zach, him and Jesus have been through a lot already. 
Yep. And the life was made. Jesus was in the beginning when God created. Now, preacher, come on. The Bible said the Word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yeah. Come on. Then the Bible said the Word was made flesh yeah. and dwelt among us. Yeah. That's Jesus. Yeah. God's Son. After all the years of thousands of years that have passed since the creation till the time that Jesus had come, the way I understand the Bible, it was 2,000 years from the beginning of time to Noah's time. It was 2,000 years from Noah's time to Jesus' time. Come on, Richard. And now it's been 2,000 years plus a few years. Right. But for 4,000 years, Lee, since the beginning of time, Come on, in man's years, yes. there was a bond made, but there was a closer bond made when Jesus became flesh and took on the flesh of man and suffered the pains of man. There was a bond that only him and God Boy, Boy I'm enjoying this. Yes. I don't know about the rest of you, but Lord. I'm enjoying it. Lord, yes. Jesus had already proven, Zach, thousands of years prior. And it was recorded, Toby, as you taught this morning, the promises that, that was made. Yes. Jesus looked at his son and said, son, Remember how terrible it was when we had to ask Abraham to give the ultimate sacrifice? Yeah. Jesus said, Father, yeah. He said, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Same thing, you're right. He said, Look down upon the face of the earth. Aren't they sweet? I know there's sin, and I know there's wickedness, but ain't they sweet? Be a Savior. They need a redeemer. They need a savior. Yes. Jesus said, what are we going to do? God said, son, you're going to have to be the ultimate, the supreme sacrifice. Right. Bless us all we know. You think it broke God's heart? I do. When Jesus said it is finished and he gave up the ghost, the word of record, the word of God records that darkness fell upon the face of the earth. Yes. Sure. Where do you think our light comes from? Yes. I believe by my understanding of the word of God, it comes from the face of God. Yes. Ricky, when darkness fell upon the face of the earth, here's what I think happened. I believe as God Almighty was watching from the portals of heaven what was going on at Golgotha. I believe God couldn't stand anymore and He turned His face. Amen. Darkness fell upon the earth. Amen. From a broken heart. But Toby, that promise that God made Abraham, yes. Abraham was fulfilled on that day. Yes. Our redemption had come forth. And our salvation was made complete. Man, this has stirred me to no end. Amen. Good message. It wasn't just something that was done overnight on a whim, on a spare of the moment. Good. But it was planned out standing if you would. When I, when I think of how he came, sing it, Lord. So far from glory, even dwell upon the lonely, such as I. Bless you, Lord. To suffer. Take 
I wonder 